Good day, fellow Jersey Nerds, and welcome to episode 82 of the Jersey Nerds Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, and today on the Nerdcast, we're going to be getting into the 2019-2020 leaked Vancouver Canucks home jersey, as well as the debacle between the ECHL, the Colorado Eagles, and the Kelly Cup. And we also have fake or authentic and the new throwback throwdown. The 1970 St. Louis Blues white jersey is back to take on a new challenger. And joining me on this Nerdcast is Sean, Beepo, and Justin. Sean, what's going on? Man, I had this big elaborate intro planned, but now the fuzz are on their way, apparently. The so hold up. We got to play it cool now, man. I don't know. I'm in a Kings jersey pouring rain outside this is not really in a hockey mood right now i mean we were discussing before we started recording how i'm a bad hockey fan i haven't watched any of the stanley cup final yet and we're four games in as of this recording uh yet somehow i watched in three i've i've watched more of the nba final well so. it's on first of all and like you know the Warriors aren't the Bruins, so you don't feel bad if the other team wins, per se. That's true. That's true. Uh, also joining us for this podcast is Beepo. Beepo, what's going on? Just recording a podcast, Ryan. And while I'm Jersey Casual again, I'm not hockey Jersey Casual this time. I am wearing a Toronto Raptors jersey. I didn't even know those were sold outside Toronto. They are on eBay. <laughs> Fair enough. Do do people do people wonder what league jersey you're wearing when you walk? Like if it didn't have the NBA patch on it, people might actually be like, "Oh, cool jersey. Where's that from?" So okay, I know we don't have an NBA team here, Ryan, but I think people know what basketball is. I know they know what basketball is. It's more a it's, it's more a, a remark about how Toronto is on the the outskirts of the NBA. It's not really. It's not really considered when everyone considers the entire NBA picture, except maybe for this year because people are forced to watch them because they're in the final. Look, Ryan, I'm not a basketball fan. Don't make niche niche basketball jokes to me. I'm not going to understand them yet. (laughs) Though I will say I have been watching the finals uh, so far, and I've been enjoying it. So, you know, I might follow it a little bit more next year. I don't know if I can uh, wrap my head around basketball, but uh, I'm happy to jump on the bandwagon and – and be a fan. Also joining us this week, uh, for the first time in a long time, Justin, what's going on? Yeah, definitely first time in a long time. I think first time in this calendar year even. So definitely been more than a minute. Um, but yeah, uh, here recording a podcast, and it's good to be back even after a long exodus. Uh, rocking uh, my first ever project jersey, actually. Bought, bought a uh, authentic uh, Penguins diagonal script jersey with a couple nasty stains on it and tried my hand at getting them out and got them out pretty pretty easily and now have a beautiful jersey to steal of a price. So we always like that. That's I love those projects. Is there a, a number? that's going to be going on it or 69 so I, I, oh, close uh 68 i think is going to be the winner um i have a a white robo pen lemieux so i'm thinking we'll make this one a yager to, to match that up a little bit that's that's a good point that's a good point gotta have uh gotta have both of them but again if it was me because i love ridiculous numbers i would find like i might throw ken Reggett on there just because there i know go. i gotta go ridiculous or i don't i can't remember if patrick lulim wore that jersey he was on the team i think he would have he would have worn at least the uh the like super row of pen alternate where if i get one of those i think it's going to be i think it's going to be a darius casparitis he was my nhl 99 go-to back in the day <laughs> beauty choice beauty choice oh, for sure all right so uh i mean this week has just been just been absolutely crazy uh you might notice when I'm recording, there's a bit of an echo, and that's because I've uh, I'm in the process of moving. I think I mentioned this previously, and just the headache of of show like showing the house to actual st- like stage the house so people can come in and view it. And when they come in, we gotta leave and we gotta pack everything up. I'm talking kids, dogs, everything's gotta go hiding into these crawl spaces where no one's gonna look. Uh, it's just been a nightmare week for me. So I don't actually have any. Uh, weird stories or anything ridiculous did anything crazy happen to to anybody else this week 
Well, uh, last Wednesday, I went to go to Kennywood with my friend, and for those of you who don't know what Kennywood is, which is actually probably all of you, it's just a local amusement park, roller coaster, stuff like that, you know. And we'd been planning this for a while because we both work. She lives three hours away. I go to school with her. Um, and so we've been planning it for a while. And we go there, and it's we get stormed out. We get to ride two rides, and we get stormed out. Fortunately, oh. we got a rain check, so we just went to Dave and & Buster's, and I don't know if they have that everywhere. For those of you who don't know, that's like an, a big arcade thing, and we just stayed there all day. Then we uh, came back to my house. She just stayed overnight here because, again, she lives three hours away, and I scared the shit out of her when the Blues scored uh, the overtime goal because <laughs> I screamed. <laughs> Not how I thought you were going to scare her, but still, like you could have taken that story and just <laughs> yeah, tweaked he's... it a little bit and it would have been fantastic, but that's still, that's still a fine story. It's you... possible. <laughs> I took her home and I scared her and cuts out. <laughs> In the States, do you guys have Chuck's Roadhouse, the restaurant? Not that I've seen. No. I've never heard of it either. Okay. All right. So I guess it just must be springing up in Canada. Anyway, so pretty so much guys, the game four has just ended blues take the game series there we go. Two two. I also my street i saw i have it on my tv behind me and on a second stream on my computer next to me and i saw on the reflection from my other screen that i have playing black right now that the blue scored i thought it was empty net goal i look over to actually watch it on the stream it froze <laughs> oh right, right if that happens. classic but i never watched it was an empty net goal. So uh, thank you for I thank you for having the game on behind you because that is the first minute of the Stanley Cup final that I've watched. Yeah, no so kidding. We will take you know, it. My head was in the way the entire time. Uh, it still counts. I saw I saw a couple sticks in there. It's all the same. <laughs> all right, so uh, we're all here. We're all ready to go. Let's get into this Vancouver Canucks jersey. Finally, ready to go. <laughs> All right, so the Vancouver Canucks uh, new jersey, new sweater for 2019-2020 leaked a week or two ago. If you want to follow along and take a look at the jersey, you can head on over to HockeyJerseyConcepts.com or take a look at the link in the uh, episode description so you can take a look at this jersey. But pretty much, it's the same Vancouver Canucks jersey, just stripped down all the decoration, and they've modified it a little bit. The uh, front logo is still the Orca logo, but they've removed the arched Vancouver above it. And the shoulder patches have changed color. It's now a white version of the stick and rink uh, logo, which actually I think is a good move because it really shows off the uh, the C. The, the rink is made up of the letter C, and it shows that uh, properly and well. The number style is still the same Vancouver Canucks number style. You'd have to assume the socks aren't changing here, but... Uh, some minor tweaks. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what you guys think. Usually we start with the positives, but I want to end with the positives on this one. So let's start with the negatives and let's not get into too much of this is what I would do to change it to the way I like it. We'll get to that at the end. Let's just look strictly at the negatives of this jersey. Sean, kick us off. They did not go far enough. Let me tell you something, Vancouver fans. When you got to rebrand a team, you got to make sure you do it right. I get oh you want Here we go again. Logo. kids like the wear logos. I didn't know Don was so passionate about hockey jerseys. But let me tell you, you got to at least change the striping a little bit there. I told uh, Terry O'Reilly in 1975, I said, listen, if the team changes the striping, they're going to change it good. And we did it right, and we had Bobby Orr behind it, and they didn't have it in Vancouver. Got to have Bobby on everything. Uh, Beepo, the negatives with the with the new sweater here. Well, I think there are only thing or two things here that are like actual true negatives that you can't really. That's harder to argue about. Like for things like the striping, I think you could argue that they're really good. I like the striping on this one. Uh, or like even the shoulder patch. I'll make another comment on that later. I like or I I'll I'll make another comment on that later. But the two things that I think are really like negatives about this one that are harder to argue with are the number font. I think a block font would look much better. Even just a block font version of this one. I actually did in a concept that I haven't put out yet or anything like that or just experimentation. I literally took that font and uh, kind of chopped off the corners and made it into a block font. It looks so much better. And the other thing is that collar. It's still a problem in a lot of the league, but the collar is still awful here. 
I really wish they would have fixed it, but I guess I'll get into the positive later. Yeah, I totally agree with everything there, Beepo. I'd love to see that font because uh, I totally agree. This this font has run its course. It's it's done. We've seen it. It's been beaten to death. It, it's done. The collar is sticking out like a sore thumb. Uh, something needs to be done about that. Um, but other than that, uh, not too many negatives here for me. Uh, Did you say it's sticking out like a sore neck? Oh, good one, Beepo. Well done. It is sticking out like a sore neck. <laughs> I'm holding my microphone in one hand, so I can't do anything but slap my legs and chest to make that sound. <laughs> like you're a kiwi well, you or want something. You to slap anything else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin, the negatives with this Canucks jersey. I just, I like when Tampa Bay did it and when Vancouver did it with the Reebok jerseys, when they had the, the, the word mark on the chest, it was like, this is stupid. Like you have your logo. Why do you have a word mark as well? Like pick one and go with it. And now that it's gone, I kind of miss it, which I never thought it would say, but it just, I, I don't actually want it there. But the reason, the fact that it's gone makes me realize how much blue there is on the chest now. And the fact that there's this darker Navy in their logo that doesn't really show up anywhere else on the Jersey. And then it's blue on blue and there's no green in there. Like it makes, it makes for a very blue chest. And so you had the white text breaking it up before. I don't think that was the solution, but I think it was something that gave you some more color. So I think again, not trying to get too much into what I would do to fix it, but, but maybe there's a way to, to get a color other than blue in there. Yeah, I'd agree with you. And I think that's what uh, kind of contributes to making the neck look really weird here. Just how much blue there is now. Cause when the white script was there, I guess it had it helped the neck tie in a little bit still looked ridiculous but now it looks even more ridiculous but uh let's switch gears here and go on a positive note and what we like about this jersey and i'll start us off with these the white shoulder patches uh if you just told me that idea i would probably think that's not going to work that's a little silly uh just go with you know the the standard logo but this actually looks really cool as i mentioned it helps the the c and the stick and rink logo stand out for canucks here so i think this is actually a really good change uh sean your positives here for this canucks jersey all right so I think my favorite thing about these connectors is they finally got rid of that script above the logo. And it really, like, it's similar to, I'd say, Blue's Ultimate Skid. Whereas, just, I'm where it looks fantastic. And it's one of the best in the NHL. And it just runs its course. And Vancouver's Edge jerseys and their first ID Zero jerseys did that. And they finally moved on, even though they probably should have when Eddie Zero switched over. I, you know, I have nothing but good things to say about that. It just ran on too long, and we can have a negative opinion on it. But now they've gotten rid of it. Uh, I agree with you on the white patches. And I... Then I think we're nice here. All right, Beepo, uh, your positives here for this jersey, for the Canucks jersey. I'm going to double down and again say that that word mark getting removed is a huge positive. <laughs> Sorry, I, just, <laughs> I looked at the chat, Ryan, and I started laughing. But that word mark is a huge positive. It didn't work for Vancouver. It didn't work for Tampa. It hardly ever works, um, especially not with a logo underneath it. Although I'd honestly argue that it's better with a logo underneath it than with just numbers like dallas or atlanta but anyways yeah the word mark completely unnecessary i'm glad it's gone and i've also said my praise before for these canucks jerseys i love the canucks jersey pattern the striping i'm glad that they didn't mess with that at all and also those white shoulder patches look great i have a little gripe with them that I probably is just a personal thing but i'll get to that later in the part where we talk about how we'd improve it all right, and Justin, uh, let's uh, go to you. And if there's any positives left, or if you want to piggyback on what everyone said. So yeah, the spirit of contradicting each other. Um, I actually like the text on the Vancouver jerseys. Um, I like their font. I think it's. Uh, I, don't know, I think it's nice. I think it's unique. Um, I've always been a fan of it. 
Um, I think uh, that, like like everyone's been saying, that the inversion of color on the shoulder patches is great. Um, it actually matches um, the first time they had the uh, stick in the ring logo on their jerseys. Uh, they had kind of like the Leafs have where they have the blue on the white jersey and the white on the blue jersey. That's what they did for the main crest. So it actually, it seems like a new idea, but it's actually keeping it more consistent with their history. So I think that's definitely aesthetically a step in the right direction, but also in terms of overall just brand identity it's a it's a step back to to consistency with their past and i think that's something that that is huge especially for a team that has a jersey and logo and what identity across the board history that is about as crazy as you can get and about as inconsistent as you can get so it's nice to have some sort of return to normalcy from the connects here great point on that one i mean this is just um as you said return to consistency really cleans things up so uh, generally positive, I would say here on this on this rejigging of the uniform, I guess retooling of the uniform. I wouldn't say it's a complete uh, overhaul or rebrand or anything like that. Um, so let's Can I look... jump in with one more positive yeah. topic that I forgot about that Justin kind of jogged my memory of. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't like the Orca logo. I've never had a problem with it. I think it's a fine logo. I think it could use a cleanup. Not too long ago, I sent a pi- uh, picture to you guys. I kind of just added some green to it, got rid of the navy blue, and cut down on the amount of strokes. And I think it's a really nice logo whenever you do that. And also, a common criticism of it is, oh, Orca Bay Sports and Entertainment, fuck off with that corporate branding stuff. <laughs> Where I saw it, I can probably find it real quick. I, I honestly might still have it as a tab on my phone. That was not an inspiration for it at all. It was just coincidence. Really? Okay. I always thought it was inspired by the people who, who own the team. I'm pretty sure I saw that it was just a coincidence. I, I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on that just in case I like messed something up in my head, but I'm pretty sure that it was just like some orca named Canuck that they did it off of. Okay. That, that would be interesting. Um, let's take a look now at the, the changes you would make to make this ideal. So you, you still want to head in this direction that they've gone. So this isn't a question about what your ideal Canucks jersey looks like. It's just taking this idea and making it the best it can be in your mind. So we'll start with Sean and just some changes you would make to make this idea idea the best. So if I want to keep going in the direction the Canucks are currently going in, I'd actually take inspiration from their current away and I'd add cuffs to the blue jersey. Now, you need to sort of figure it out what you'd want to do with it, whether you wanted white cuffs or green cuffs and how you want to space the striping out. But I'd say that of the two jerseys from the edge era carried over, the white one, despite what I said about the matching, uh, the white one was actually the stronger one. And if you do have the chance to, you know, you should edit your home jersey to look like that in that sense because then you'll fill out more of the jersey that you're losing, um, you know, that color from the script above the logo. So you need to sort of fill that out because without it, I think you end up with a very basic blank jersey. And the Orca logo is nice, but unlike something like the skate on a plate or the flying skater, or you want to call it, it can't fill logo space because it's not that detailed. So you're in a weird sort of bind there, but that's how I'd fix it anyways. And, you know, maybe, maybe from there you talk about a logo switch, but I don't think it's necessary at this point. All right. Good stuff there. Uh, Beepo, would you have the same, uh, same changes or would it be a little more minimal? Well, aside from the aforementioned font and collar change, I most definitely would not change the striping because I completely disagree. I love the striping on both this and the road jersey. And if you think Detroit's jerseys or Tampa's jerseys, but especially Detroit because those ones are more universally praised, if you think those are fine and not too plain, why would this be too plain? It's basically Detroit's jerseys with an extra stripe around it. And I'm not saying that to make a, another stupid comparison to a jersey. I'm just saying that because it has more to it than Detroit's jersey. So I don't I don't think this is too plain at all. I like it. Now, the one change that I would make right now, or at least try out, I'm not I don't want to make my final judgment until I see it truly on the ice or see it in more than two different mock ups because the only two I've seen were the one that 
was the leak, and another one by user uh, at S7Design on Twitter, and he mocked up the new jersey as well. And I, I, I'm going to save my final judgment for seeing it on the ice, but for now, I would honestly switch the shoulder patches on the jerseys. I would put the blue one on the blue jersey and the white one on the white jersey because I think – it would look a little bit better if it was more subtle because it wouldn't draw your eye to it as much as it does now. I would think it would be better to have that attention to the logo and the striping rather than on the shoulder. But I don't think it should be removed entirely because that, that might make the, the – that would probably make the top of the jersey a little bit too plain. So I would just switch the two, have the blue on the blue jersey and the uh, – like they had before and the white on the white jersey. So it's there, but it's not too in your face. Really interesting point there. I'm, I, you know, personally, I'm on the opposite end of that, but that would be interesting to see how that would how that would work out. So that's a really interesting point, uh, Justin. Uh, some tweaks here that you would make to this jersey to make it ideal for yourself. Yeah. So two options: either either give me green or give me spaghetti. Um, <laughs> so as as people were saying the. Exactly. Don't give me green spaghetti. I don't. I don't. I'm no Sam. I am character. I don't want green eggs and ham. I don't want green spaghetti. Uh, plain and simple. Um, um, but but yeah, I, the orca is is not a bad logo. I don't mind it. I don't frankly care if it was inspired by Orca Sports and Entertainment or some orca named Kanak or even some guy named Orca. Doesn't matter to me. Um, but but it does need some green. I think it's it's if you have a color in a logo that's not used in the jersey and it's an accent color, that's perfectly fine. That's great. But if it's one of the two and frankly the only two colors in the logo it just doesn't make sense that it's it's nowhere else to be found and especially in a blue jersey having a darker shade of blue in the logo as well with nothing else around it just doesn't serve you well so figure it away whether it's what Bepo did and has shown us and get some green in there and get some of the other royal blue in there to get some some color that's seen elsewhere on the jersey fine but otherwise give me spaghetti skate man like with the with the retro shoulder patches like I don't know if y'all have seen, but there's some concepts out there that have recolored the spaghetti skate look in the the blue and green, and it looks beautiful. Like it is honestly better than than the original um, than the original red and gold look. So definitely throw that on there. Yeah. Um, something something that uh, Jets mentioned um, as well is the kind of dissonance between the home and road, and that he would match the home to the road. What I would actually do is um, right now the road has the uh, thick blue cuffs beneath the similar striping as the home but on the hemline it doesn't it doesn't echo that and you just have the green um bordered by thin white and thin blue what i would do is just map uh just like you have the thick cuffs just put a thick blue hem beneath it and then you have consistency there and it matches the home perfectly as well and honestly that way it's even the 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 body of the of the jersey has a nice balance of green and blue rather than being so green heavy as it is now on the waistline so that's something that's bothered me since these jerseys have came into the fold and that's something that's when i heard that they were touching up the jerseys but not necessarily overhauling them that was something that i was really hoping for and i guess i guess we'll have to wait and see since the only thing that was leaked was the the home so there's still some some leeway for them to do some adjustment on the road if they if they so desire yeah then that's really exciting for obviously all of us jersey nerds is that there's uh still another jersey to see here so that's uh leads to lots of speculation and lots of thoughts and people obviously can do up their concepts of what they expect to see as far as some of the tweaks that i would make here it'd really just be two of them i think uh this is an appropriate jersey just to get rid of the white collar just do a solid royal blue collar and it would look similar to a Nike uh, international jersey where there actually is no collar trim or is no definitive collar. I think that could that could work for Vancouver. And we touched on it before, but the number font, uh, I would make it uh, bolder, maybe a little more blockier, something a little more sports uh, sports centric because this font has run its course for me. I'm, I'm done with it. But I do like uh, the Vancouver removed and... I'm a fan of the striping orientation, but uh, on a white sweater, I would uh, wouldn't mind to see the bottom uh, hem of the jersey also be royal blue to match the cuffs. So uh, again, that is the leaked Vancouver Canucks home jersey for the 2019-2020 season. You can get it. Uh, take a look at it by clicking the link in the episode description, or just head on over to hockeyjerseyconcepts.com and you'll see a picture there. We do have to quickly get into probably. A weird story. This story seems more fitting for like the early 1900s, like it should end up in a history book. But in the ECHL, 
they have made a new Kelly Cup trophy, which we haven't seen as of this recording, because the trophy they've been using for the last several years is still in the possession of the Colorado Eagles. They've won the last two years in the ECHL, and then they moved up to into the AHL, and apparently it's uh, just an understood rule that when you win the trophy and you're done all your promo stuff with it and whatever new season starts, you give it back to the league. And Colorado just said, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, so a statement came from the league that said, no, Colorado didn't return it. And then a statement came from Colorado that said, no, no, we've tried to return it, but the league won't take it. So obviously there's something going on here that we don't know about. I, I read an article co- article that speculated that uh, there's a dispute between the Eagles and the ECHL about exit fees when the team left the league and went to the AHL. But none of that's confirmed. But seeing as uh, these two sides just want to release generic statements and not really get into what's happening... That'll lead us to speculate, which is always fun. So uh, just a quick thought about what's going on here and how ridiculous this is, Sean. Well, like, let me give you an equivalent of where I can understand maybe this happens. They're changing leagues, right? Okay. So the Manchester Monarchs, God rest their soul, did that. And they gave the Calder Cup back. So why can't the Colorado Eagles do this? Like, this isn't that hard. And by the way, the Newfoundland Growlers are a game away from winning the Kelly Cup. The new Kelly Cup. And I hope they do. And if you're telling me that the Colorado Eagles are going to be the thing keeping the Kelly Cup away from the Newfoundland Growlers, I will personally fly to Colorado and kick your sorry asses. I really hope the trophy looks different. Like this is a this is a chance to create something different instead of just creating the same trophy cuz then almost at that point it's just a replica. That's all you're doing is is creating a replica. Uh Beepo, your thoughts on this crazy situation? I have a conspiracy theory that I just thought of. Alex Ovechkin did not have enough with the Stanley Cup last year. He also had to go and uh kidnap the Kelly Cup and this year he's coming for the Calder Cup. He's just going to have a big collection in his Russian dungeon. Exactly. And then the year <laughs> after, he'll find another one to go after. <laughs> the Gargarian Gar- Cup or whatever they give in the KHL for the astronaut who went to space. <laughs> uh, Justin, this is a ridiculous situation. As I mentioned, something fit for a history book from 100 years ago. What do you think of what's going on here? Yeah, it's definitely uh, one of the stranger stories, um, especially to deal with sports trophies in a long time. Um, and it's, it's one of those things where, like, I feel like you'll never really know what happened because it's so strange that even, like, the true details, like, seem fake. And so, like, at this point, what I've heard is that, um, and I've done minimal reading, so definitely take what I say with a grain of salt. Um, but essentially, the, the Colorado Eagles were trying to sell their spot in the league since they kind of left on their own accord. They were trying to sell their spot to a team that was quote-unquote relocating and to kind of take that as like, oh, we're just a new franchise and we're this now. And the ECHL was like, no, that makes no sense. That's stupid. So then the Colorado Eagles were like, okay, then like refund us our membership fee in the league. And then they were, and then the ECHL was like, no, that's also stupid. And then, and then the Eagles were like, well, you know what else is stupid? The fuck trophy because it's ours <laughs> and so essentially that's what it is is they're just they they're, they're trying to get essentially more money out of the league or get money back from the league or something just just get money and the league is saying no we're a respectable league we're not going to pander this crap and they're like well we can't be a respectable league without a trophy so boom <laughs> and uh, yeah so it's definitely a big a big contest of uh who's got the long schlong and then right now the long schlong belongs to the Kelly cup. So (laughs) I feel like the league kind of just bent over here because they just went ahead and made a new trophy. It wasn't like they, they, you know, brought this battle out publicly earlier. They, they, they were just like, uh, yeah, they didn't give us back our trophy. So we just made a new one. It, It doesn't, it doesn't seem like the league was really willing to, to fight on this. Like, yeah, fine. Fuck you, Colorado. We'll just make another trophy, you know? So, uh, hey Ryan, if I Photoshop the Kelly Cup with a long schlong, on, <laughs> can you put it in the uh, podcast notes? <laughs> uh, it totally seems appropriate. So, yeah, why not? We'll throw it on, throw it in the podcast notes. <laughs> Happy to have had an impact again. <laughs> Man, that Kelly Cup's really packing some heat. Look at that. 
Just, just if you can, oh, just got a big cup, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> just draw it with like a big bulge in the front. No, that's what it is, man. You're talking about the new design of the Kelly Cup. It should just be a golden cup. Yeah. <laughs> for, the long, for the longest of schlongs, man. I thought you were just going to say a big golden dick. That would be awesome. Well, if the, also that option. <laughs> if the growlers or the walleye win this year and the commissioner walks out to center ice with a big golden dick and just hands it over to the captain, come get the Kelly Cup. Oh, that's weird. And then instead of kissing it like you do with a smaller cup, you just lick it. I was going to say, but if they're not willing to touch the Prince of Wales trophy, imagine what I want to do with a Kelly cup. My goodness. How do you drink out of the new Kelly cup shaped like a dick? Oh, you know exactly how. <laughs> First, you got to make it. You got to make it hard. And you got to kind of rub it a little bit up and down. And then it'll they just bring up a flaccid trophy. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Mechanical <laughs> trophy and all the sports to get flaccid and hard. <laughs> flaccid and hard. Oh, I'm so glad that we. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad that we got into this on the podcast. Uh, but what what a crazy story! And I really think our our ideas need to be seriously looked at by the league. I mean, they may be presenting the trophy as we're recording or within the next 24 hours. But if they can get some sort of golden dick situation together here. Uh, by the time we publish this podcast, that would be fantastic. And we would personally become fans here on the podcast and definitely be talking about it. But uh, Just that... make it out of tin foil and uh, gold spray paint. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> There but, you go, ECHL. Feel free to use my idea. Yeah, I was say, let's just put it together, mail them, mail them a prototype. If theirs isn't done in time, they'll have to use it. <laughs> there you go, e, the E. That's a freebie just for you. But uh, let's, let's, dude, let's seal the new Kelly Cup and hold it for ransom. <laughs> and the ransom is they have to use our replacement for a year. That would be so wasn't, good. That would be great. Wasn't, if, there some, wasn't there some league that actually wasn't able to give the – true to the team whenever they want it because it was like stolen or lost or I, that, I think that almost happened with the NHL in like a couple of years ago I don't remember what year because they like were trying to get into the rink yeah well the keeper of the cup that. Phil Pritchard or Phil I think Phil Pritchard is his name so instead of just being there for the game he was at his hotel and I guess he waited until like the third period to make his way on over to the arena with the cup and it was pouring rain outside with tons of traffic, and he wasn't. Ma- he didn't make it on time. It's like <laughs> I thought so, he actually made it. That but is he great, time, didn't he? No, he made it like five or ten minutes late. They were lit- oh. the Hawks were literally waiting on the ice for the for the cup to to get I ready. That. Yeah, so is that what I was thinking yeah. of now? I think that's Probably. what you might have been thinking. That was t- okay. 2015. Because I thought yeah. that he actually did make it in time, but just in the nick of time. I, I feel like he was late. I mean, like, they were fighting around for at least a couple minutes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it would be great to see in the ECHL, like, whoever wins this year, the new Kelly Cup comes out, and then the owner of the of the Eagles just happens to be in the arena, and he runs onto the ice and steals it again. and <laughs> <laughs> Just becomes this running gag every year that the Eagles steal the trophy. He uh, runs out onto the ice with the old Kelly Cup and switches the two. <laughs> but, but the old Kelly Cup is like all dented and stuff like that. Yeah. It looks like they beat it with a hammer. Or, or they start shipping it back to the league piece by piece. Here's the first band. Here's the second band. That would be that would be pretty good. But this is a crazy story. But half bands, I thought it was more like a wasn't like a trophy on a block kinda. Yeah, but yeah, it, it, there's like I think certain, it's like plated like like yeah. a beauty trophy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So I mean I'm sure Colorado, if they wanted to, could find yeah, a way to take it apart. It's kind of more like a band. Yeah. <laughs> if Colorado like Cup. So it'll be interesting to see what the new one looks like, and I'm sure uh when we do see it, pro- probably by next week we'll be able to cover that on uh on the Jersey Nerds yeah, podcast. So it'll be uh it'll be interesting to see what that looks like and we'll definitely have that coming up in a future episode
fake or authentic? It's time for Fake or Authentic. This is the part of the podcast where I come up with statements, but it's up to the co-hosts to determine whether or not they are fake or authentic, just like the jerseys you see around NHL arenas on fans' backs. So here we go. Fake or Authentic, number one, I would give up 40% of my IQ to play in the NHL for $5 million a year. So think about what a $5 million a year player is. We're talking... What, 15 to 20 goals a season? Uh, you know, fame, everything that comes with it, uh, playing in the NHL, obviously. But you got to give up 40% of your IQ. Sean, fake okay, or authentic? Real quick, not that it affects my answer, but on our podcast notes, you have $7 million. It doesn't it matter. You're making a large sum of money, okay. Beepo. Like I said, not that it affects my answer, but I wanted to clear that up. But th- thank you for taking five seconds of everyone's time. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. <laughs> They did. Feedback's already pouring in, and they're saying thank you. Let's go to Sean, fake or authentic. Be sure to send me a tweet at BPC Design and thank me for that interruption. And this one, too. You know, after that, I just can't spare that 40%, guys. I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, But in all seriousness, uh, no. No, and the reason why is, like, you know, I mean, I considered it for a brief second, and then I just remembered something. I get hit. But you're stupid. Would it would it really affect you that much? Like, I was talking about this. Three percent of nothing is still nothing, bud. Forty <laughs> percent of nothing is still nothing. Oh fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> So you haven't uh, taken that bet already, Sean? <laughs> Yikes! Not like if you get if you get nailed to the boards by like you know six foot seven defenseman, that hurts no matter what. Like I still I like, check. Stupid people don't just you know run into brick walls. And go, oh yeah. No, trust me, they do. I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I'm not taking that risk. I'm out. You know what? You can <laughs> millions of dollars. I'm going to go work out in the rain. <laughs> All right, Beepo, fake or authentic, you would give up 40% of your IQ to play in the NHL for 5 to $7 million a year. What's an IQ? Oh, wait, that doesn't matter. I have, I have $7 million right here. Yeah. It doesn't matter how smart I am. <laughs> I would do it. I mean, I, I don't know how stupid I would be if I gave up 40% of my IQ, but I would hope that I would be like that stupid where I'm so content with it that I don't realize I'm stupid. But I also have $7 million or $5 million, whatever. Yeah, that's what I was you know, saying with my friends when I went over this question. Like, I, I think you'd get to the point where you're so stupid, you would be ignorant to how stupid you are. Either that or the type of stupid where I realize I'm stupid and I don't really care anyways. It's like, okay, I'm not going to chime into your intellectual conversations. I, But, you know, I have at least some purpose in life. <laughs> I'll just count my stacks of money over here. Uh, Justin, fake or authentic? I mean, I don't think NHL players are necessarily the smartest people in the world to begin with. So I feel like even if you lose like 40% of your IQ, you might still like not be like the dumbest one out there. Yeah. So I feel like you could probably be like be passable. Like they, they live their lives. They don't get stuck in elevators too often. So I feel like, I feel like you'd be all right. I mean, and I think, I think people would give up a lot to, to be an NHL player. Like honestly, like even you know, salary aspect of it like just being an nhl player whatsoever like i feel like there's there's a lot you give up and like you know you'd be stupid enough that you wouldn't you wouldn't remember really where what you used to be like so you wouldn't miss it too much like maybe you're you're the ryan reeves level of smart but hey you're you're the ryan reeves level of nhl player too so that's pretty solid i totally agree with you all right this next one's based on uh this this is based on the NBA final going on uh, between Toronto and Golden State right now. But people in Toronto are waiting in line for like 12 to 15 hours, not to get into the stadium, but to wait outside the stadium and watch the game on the big screen. People are actually waiting 12 to 15 hours in line just for the chance to do that. So fake or authentic, I would not wait 12 hours in line or more to watch my team on the TV outside the arena in the championship series. Sean, fake or authentic? 
As a former Torontonian, hell no. Are you kidding me? Standing outside with a bunch of people probably couldn't even tell me who, like, you know, let's use the least, for example. I don't want to hang out with a bunch of people who couldn't tell me who Matt Stajan was. And half of them are going to be drunk, and you're all bunched together. When I can do this at home for free with beer? I think they, I think they do sell beer. I, I think there's like a Coors tent set up or something. They sell beer. Okay, and let's take like, let's say you're a celebrity. Let's say you're Drake. Did you see that Drake had to like stand up on a stage to watch his game? Screw Drake. Nobody cares about Drake. I don't care about Except Drake. for like half of the population. Drake is like when you're, when you're playing like Little League Baseball and like your three-year-old brother is there and he like thinks he's a part of the team and he's trying to sit in the dugout and it's like, dude, you're going to get hit by a ball. Like Drake is just like this oddball like teenager who's just like, yeah, I say words and people like to listen to it, but I'm also a basketball player because that's how sports work. And it's like, dude, sit down. I was oh. listening to the Spit Chicklets podcast earlier and they had a pretty funny uh, take in that it seems like Drake is just like he's there and he's thinking that he's going to be called into the game one time yep. and that's why he's doing it. He shows up. He's gonna be like, "All right, Drake, come on, let's go play." <laughs> he shows up to every game with a with a jersey underneath whatever he's wearing, just in case, just in case. You never know, man. You never know. He takes off his Del Curry jersey to reveal an actual team jersey. <laughs> yes, uh, Graham on the back of it. Because for those of you who don't know, his full name is Aubrey Drake Graham. And Wait, that's my Aubrey. joke. Peter explains the joke. <laughs> All right, so uh, Beep, are you fake or authentic on waiting 12 or more hours to to watch your team outside the arena on the TV? Well, this is going to be a different scenario for me because I'm a Penguins fan, and it's a little bit different the way the Penguins do the big screen. And I'm definitely going to say uh, fake on this one that I totally would wait outside for this because I have before, not for 12 to 15 hours. But uh, I think we got there the one night that I did around like maybe 2 or 3-ish, and the game was probably at 8 So, uh, and granted, we also weren't standing the whole time. We were just sitting down. It was just me and three friends. We had our lawn chairs and such. We were just sitting down, uh, shooting the shit for a little while. There was a subway outside the arena. We went and got food. It was one of the best days of my life. It was such a fun day. Also, probably because um, Penguins beat the Senators in double OT. That probably helped a lot. I don't think it would have been one of the best days of my life if that didn't happen, (laughs) if the Penguins for example but it was just an incredibly fun day and i would totally do something like that again i wanted to this year but y- you know <laughs> the penguins didn't win a game in the playoffs the penguins got swept got triple swept you know <laughs> i still really wish the blues would have just won the stanley cup tonight in order to complete the quadru- quadruple quadruple sweep because at this point i don't really care i'm just i'm just here for the memes even if it is completely just shitting on the penguins i don't care i just like the memes <laughs> All right, uh, Justin, are you fake or authentic on this one? Definitely authentic. I'm not a Lions person whatsoever. Um, honestly, like, if it was even, like, like I wouldn't even wait in, like, line for 12 hours for, like, a chance at, like, a free ticket to, like, a regular season game. Like, so the fact that it then, honestly, I think, like, the cool, stuff, the cool thing for me in the playoffs is when they, like, fill the stadium, like, of the road team, and, like, they have the game on, like, on the Jumbotron, and you can still get that arena atmosphere. I think that's really cool, but, like, just being outside, I don't know, it doesn't doesn't have the same the same value for me, and I just, 12 hours is a long time. Like, like at Purdue, like, all our basketball games, like, people camp out to get, like, lower bowl seats and stuff, and, like, for, like, the IU game, like, against our big rival, people do it for, like, straight up, like, 24 hours just to get a lower bowl seat, and, like, I've never understood that and they never had the desire to either so i think i'd definitely definitely be with be with sean at home um having a beer of my own and not having to pay for expensive coors light at, at stadium prices so well we'll kick it on the couch yeah maybe when i was uh younger i would have lined up but now that i've yeah when you have a home and you have your your chair and you have your tv package and you have your own beer it's hard to reason with yourself to to get out of the house. I think I think the longest I waited for anything was to see a band at a radio station, just do a little uh, acoustic set. And I waited six hours outside the radio station to, to see that. But I was 21, 22 at the time. So we're talking 14 years ago. Uh, I haven't done anything like that since. So I don't think I would, uh, I wouldn't be waiting 12 hours to watch my team on the TV. Unless there was like a chance at tickets, but it'd have to be a good chance. So pretty much, no, I'm not doing it. 
Uh, let's get to our final fake or authentic here. Uh, fake or authentic, I never have high hopes for the Cup Champions locker room hat and T-shirt design. Sean? What do you mean? Like that they're good? Yeah. That's what high hopes well, are. No. They don't have a logo with a plane on it and, you know, or at least a blue or maybe a coyote. Like, if they, I mean, then I might buy one. But, uh, yeah, no, I never have high hopes for these. Like, you guys ever seen the championship gear from the 90s? It's beautiful. That stuff is lit. No. <laughs> like, that stuff is like insane the uh specifically the 1990 edmonton oilers championship hat which looked like a free promo hat or there was the uh the 1995 new jersey devils stanley cup championship hat or uh another good one uh the 98 red wings championship hat that that was very 90s that looks like a dad's fisherman's hat there's a person hey now hey now this is great <laughs> First of all, second of all, the per- like these things have like persona and like when you whip them out now, there's like a certain vibe, like a I won this. You whip them out now and it's like, ooh, you went to fanatic and purchased this, and everybody could have the same one. Like for God's sake, okay, who's rummaging? Who's rummaging? You are. <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> Just keep going. Fuck. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Drake got a finals hat in the NBA finals. He got a hat, and he didn't play. Oh, yeah, he made sure to get himself a hat quickly, too. But he got a hat. I think a lot of fans probably have hats because they sell them to the public. Well, that's just it, right? Is that it's like if you're going to make them sell them to the public, make them look cool. Not happening. Uh, Beepo. Fanatics just wants gray. It's like it's gray and black. It's got their logo and it says champs on it. What more do you want? <laughs> There's 31 possible options. Soon to be 32. Uh, Beepo, fake or authentic? Uh, never have high hopes for the Cup Champions locker room gear. I'm gonna say authentic because I honestly just don't really think about that gear a lot of the times. I mean, we talk about it on the podcast, but I don't really think about it that much other than that. It's just kind of cool. You won the championship. Have a or or you you know, I guess even if you won the conference, you won a championship in a certain sense, the like Western Conference or Eastern Conference championship. But you know, cool. You won something. Have a shirt and a hat. Although, I will say, I do always think it looks good whenever it has a logo with a triangle on it with a penguin skating through it. Which there's so many of those in the NHL that could be any number of teams. Exactly. (laughs) Justin, uh, fake or authentic on uh, not having high hopes for the Cup Champs locker room gear? Definitely authentic. I mean, there's just nothing to it. I mean, I, I own a couple, like... Penguins Cup champion shirts from 2016, 2017, but none of them are like the official design. Like they're all stuff that was made, I don't know, not aftermarket per se, but it's like additional designs and they have like the like full team roster on the back and like a cool, the cool design on the front that isn't just like, yay, we won happy times. I mean, it's, it's like uh, on the one hand, like it's kind of understandable because like, sure, you can make the argument that they don't have a lot of lead time to do it, but it's like also like, you know, which two teams are going into the final. Um, you also are making both of them anyway for the most part and you'll have your phantom championship gear that gets shipped off to who knows where in africa um so so you're already making it and you already have some amount of time to do it so like just just put a little bit of effort like i'm sure there's plenty of graphic designers who would love to to be able to design the championship gear and whatever and to have it not be gray black and full of sadness um (laughs) And, it, and it's, it's just silly because, like, they, they take off their uniforms and then they wear, like, the most generic shirt that, like, you think would be given to, like, an intramural team winning at a college and not, like, the peak of, of the sport. It's just – it's silly and it's sad. Like, especially when I get what, – what gets me is, like, the backup goalie because he's wearing, like, this sick, like, team hat all game long, all series long. And then as soon as they win, it's like, fuck, I got to take this off and put on that piece of garbage? Like, <laughs> yeah. come on. Like, the rest of them, like, it's their sweaty helmets. And it's like, you know what? I'll take this off and put anything on at this point. But, like, the back of goalie he's rocking this this sweet one that he picked out whatever design was his favorite been wearing it all playoffs and then he's got to put on this black and gray just 
pit of sadness. <laughs> I often wonder what happens to the championship gear because, I mean, you have quite those guys have quite the night. Plus, after they get changed, they're changing into their their suits or whatever. So, and the, they're just getting covered in champagne. So, I wonder if they just they put on the hat and the shirt for the celebration. But then afterwards, I like, is there just a big pile of soaked championship clothing on the floor of the dressing room? Because everyone's just taking it off and, and throwing it off to the side. And then they come back to the team two weeks later and be like, yeah, I need a, I need a few championship hats and shirts. Uh, I don't wear, don't know where mine is. So those are those take them and they donate them to third world countries. <laughs> They don't even wash them. So just, they don't you even. know, that's, that's a new market, man. Game use championship celebration gear. Like, yes. wouldn't you want like the, the freaking champagne doused Ovechkin shirt? Like, man, incredible. <laughs> like I hate the capitals, but I would pay a non-zero amount of cash for that. <laughs> well said. Which, absolutely. Uh, what about, um, Ovechkin's, uh, game used cum rag? Uh, why is that game used i was on that podcast with (laughs) back the old jokes on this one that just raises a question why is that happening in game like surely you score a good goal and sometimes you just know you just you just know (laughs) you can't help it ovechkin in shoots scores and he whips it out and starts pleasuring himself Maybe it's not game. You gotta Maybe celebrate one way or another, man. Racing <laughs> used. You gotta do something in the penalty box. <laughs> I got they two minutes. Come on. They call That's it the Sidbin for a reason, man. <laughs> That's why they usually don't uh, have a uh, camera on the player in the penalty box. At least not like during the penalty. It's usually like right before and right after the penalty. <laughs> That's the... why. Do you think they cover the camera with their stick so often? Yeah. Man? Yeah. <laughs> I still remember they gotta, see, they gotta see one stick or another. They just choose the hockey one instead. <laughs> I just remember seeing one time in the penalty box. It might have been Tyler Sagan, but it was at least a Stars player. And I have it recorded on my phone. He he got into the penalty box and he just took the camera, just got swipe at it and knocked it down. I guess we know what he was doing in there. <laughs> this is my alone time. All right. Uh, so that was fake or authentic. We have now our new edition of Throwback Throwdown. Alright, throwback throwdown and returning this week is our championship jersey, the 1970 St. Louis Blues white jersey. Uh, and it's going up against the 1976 Kansas City Scouts blue jersey. Now I consider this kind of a, a battle of the shoulder yokes. That's why these uh, the Kansas City jersey was chosen. And the St. Louis jersey has its own unique shoulder yoke. So that's kind of the feature of this battle. If you want to see what these jerseys look like, again, there's a link in the episode description or head on over to hockeyjerseyconcepts.com. The returning champion, St. Louis Blues, 1970 white jersey. It's a white jersey. It's got the classic St. Louis logo. The sleeve and hem stripes repeat each other. It's a big uh, royal stripe outlined in gold and then outlined in thin royal. The yoke is uh, very unique. It's a royal stripe outlined in white. And then we have a separate gold stripe, which is thinly outlined in blue. Let's take a look at the Scouts jersey. It's a royal blue jersey. The hem and the arm stripes repeat themselves. So we have a broad red stripe outlined in royal blue. And then we have a gold stripe on the top and bottom of that striping situation. Running through the middle of both those gold stripes is a very thin red stripe that striping situation also shows up on the yoke it makes for a very unique jersey uh still very popular and uh, you can pick it up as a vintage jersey i believe in several locations so this will be interesting to see where this goes and as an added wrinkle this week we asked you guys the listeners to place a vote so we'll have those results which will contribute to our final result this week Uh, So, Sean, let's start with our returning champion, St. Louis. And we've already kind of said what we wanted to say last week, but just a very quick recap of your thoughts. It's fine. (laughs) That is a beautifully quick recap. Uh, What kind of fine is it? Is it a, honey, I'm sorry, I forgot to do everything you told me to do and went to Home Depot fine? Or is it a, no, it's actually fine, fine. You'll never know. Take that, all two female viewers of our podcast. <laughs> There's female viewers? Oh, man. Uh, Beep, um, <laughs> Beepo, uh, quick recap of your thoughts here. 
Uh, let's double up on Sean there and just add my two cents. It's fine, <laughs> but the shoulder yoke's a little bit too busy for my liking. Okay, and Justin, you weren't on last week, but uh, let's hear your thoughts on the St. Louis jersey. Yeah, um, for me, it's more than fine. Um, I really like it. Um, if I could change one thing, I would just extend the um, the blue of the shoulder yoke down to the other striping. Um, that way you kind of match the the rest of the striping and you have blue on the yellow on the blue again. Um, and I think honestly do that. And like, it's, it's really solid across the board. I mean, it's, it's the white counterpart of their recent alternate that everyone loves um, and their winter classic Jersey. And I don't think there's any reason not to love this one as well. So yeah, big fan. All right, let's move over to the Kansas city scouts Jersey. Now uh, the only difference between this one, the 1976 version and the 1975 version is on the 76 version. The, primary logo is outlined in white so that's the only difference here but uh this is a really cool jersey sean your thoughts on the kansas city scouts it's fine i just find it funny how it's better than the st louis jersey and yet the team was much worse but it's fine all right beepo well let's say you got that st louis jersey there and uh, not unlike Evgeny Kuznetsov, it does crack. <laughs> then you get that Kansas City Scouts jersey. <laughs> it's both busier, though, and not busier at the same time, because that little red stripe, it's hard to notice sometimes from afar. It's really weird. But regardless, it's a lot more vibrant just because of the color choices used, how much that red and yellow just stand out from that bright blue. And also, I just noticed the sock stripe is the reverse of the arm and hems. And that is very annoying to me. (laughs) All right, Justin, your thoughts here on the scouts. Yeah. So, uh, when, when I was younger, um, me and my brothers had like NHL coloring books because we're Canadian kids living in Texas and why not? (laughs) Um, and we needed whatever fix we could get. And, and like me and my middle brother would always, yeah, exactly. And, uh, me and my, me and my middle brother would always uh, just color like how the teams were. And then my oldest brother would just make every team red and green because those were his two favorite colors and it always looked horrible. (laughs) And I just feel like, I feel like this is like, if like six year old Ryan got to design like an NHL Jersey back in the day, it was just like, you know what? Like I can't pick a color, so I'm going to use all of them. Like I just, I've never, I've never thought the, uh, the red, yellow blue worked especially in how thin of striping they used them it just kind of uh to steal uh Beepo's reference it's a little trippy and a little uh a little coke induced i think a little bit um and it, it kind of i don't know it gets your it gets your eyes a little buggy um and yeah it's just never sat well with me i've I've never been a fan of the Kansas Scouts identity, Kansas City Scouts, I should say. Um, but yeah, there's just it's kudos for going for it. And hey, you want to use all three primary colors? Like, sure, but there's there's better ways to get it done, kids. Just a little disclaimer: I'm not accusing Kuznetsov of doing coke, but he may or may not have done it. And either way, does it really matter? He's a professional sports player; they all do drugs. As long as we can joke about it, I don't care. I mean, he's a, like, he's a Capitals player, so he deserves have, it one way or another. I have no filter. I don't, uh, you know, I just, it, it's just a nice joke. It's just, joke. it's just slander. Whatever. You went from, <laughs> you, you went from blaming one person to doing crack. Uh, and then you just, you said, no, forget that. Every sports athlete does drugs, does <laughs> Okay, well, that was like... Uh, should, I'm, should, not, I'm not, I'm not going to say Kuznetsov does crack. I'm just going to say every NHL player does crack, and that way it's even. That way I'm not discriminating. It's fair. Well, in all fairness, I mean, pretty much all of the criticism I've heard about Kuznetsov was like, eh, a lot of them do it anyways. So I'm just yeah, kind of repeating yeah. everybody else's it's comments there. Well, What's that, Sean? Yeah, goal. Took it across the border. And he is a national hero. <laughs> and he got caught. <laughs> Yeah, so did Bob Probert in the 80s, so. True. (laughs) All right, uh, let's get back on track, because this isn't a throwback throwdown for drugs. This is a throwback throw. (laughs) Don't you mean back in line? 1970s cocaine and 2019 (laughs) cocaine. What's better? (laughs) Both everyone has their piles. Let's snort now and see which one we like. Okay. Describe it to our our listeners, please. (laughs) I'm going to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this Kansas City jersey I, I love because it's got three. 
This this should be ridiculous, and it just the jersey kind of reminds me of 1970s carpeting. Now that I look at it, but uh, it should be ridiculous. It is ridiculous, but everything's working so well, and I I want this jersey to come back. It's like why does this only last for two years? But it did only last for two years. Uh, I I love this jersey, and I'm going to start us off with picking winners. I'm going to take the Kansas City Scouts on this one. Uh, Sean, St. Louis or Kansas City? Let's do something the actual scouts could never do, and that's string two wins together. Because I in KC uh, win here. It's a beautiful identity. I really want. I actually want the white version more, but I love the blue version as well. Uh, like no star power on this team. Uh, so good luck picking a name. I think Kenny Heron the like the only good name you can get in it. I think you can get Wilf Paymont number ninety nine. Oh, yeah, you can. All right, there's two. There you go. All right, so before we get to uh, Beepo and Justin's vote, let's go to the reader vote from uh, that was posted on Twitter. And by a 60% to 40% margin, the listeners slash readers have chosen the St. Louis Blues jersey. So the current score is 2-1. to one. We'll see where this goes, whether or not that pushes St. Louis over the edge or uh, <laughs> it's all in vain. But uh, Beepo... Who wins this battle? Well, based on Justin's reaction to uh, seeing the reader vote, I know who's winning this one, and that is the St. Louis Blues. Um, because, uh, I mean, the, it was honestly more of a debate than I expected it to be in my head, but the St. Louis Blues one is just a little bit cleaner and a little bit more classic and something that I could actually see coming back today. Unlike that Kansas City one, I could not see that today aside from like a throwback. Okay, Justin, you get to decide who wins this week's throwback throwdown. Yeah, so I was a little disappointed we uh, revealed the uh, reader vote ahead of time because I was definitely going to, I had the the comment in mind to say, in the spirit of St. Louis, we're going to make this one 2-2. I guess uh, in the spirit of St. Louis, we're going to preview game five against Boston that's coming up, and we're going to make it 3-2 for, for the Blues. In so the spirit of St. Louis, uh, we're going to we're gonna throw back to game two. <laughs> yeah, so definitely uh, St. Louis takes this one home for me. Um, keep it simple. Uh Blue, yellow, white, get that red out of there. Um, noted the Blues figured out how to make uh, blue, uh, yellow, and red work. Um, so I guess they're the better Missouri team in terms of history and in terms of jerseys uh, and across the board. So if you're going to go to Missouri, go to St. Louis and not Kansas City. I think that's, uh, that's a moral of the story. This is definitely a geography battle and, and where you should. Where well, you you should... got to take in all the factors, man, 100%. <laughs> All right, so St. Louis comes from behind and defeats the Kansas City Scouts, and we'll move on again to next week. So I guess uh, we'll have to come up with a new challenger here to the St. Louis Blues jersey. They won two weeks in a row. Um, If you have any ideas on who should take on the St. Louis jersey next week, let us know on Twitter at HockeyJC, or you can email us, jerseynerdspodcast at gmail.com. And uh, since it won two times in a row, that means it's an automatic bid for the Hall of Fame, right? It's getting close. Let's let's <laughs> maybe get it to like five or something here. Unlike the Kansas City Scouts, it looks like the Blues could st- uh, string two wins in a row. On the <laughs> All right, so coming up, uh, we've been promoting it for a while, just getting it set up and just getting it started. But you're going to be able, to, we're going to be bringing back the mailbag, but it's going to be a voicemail edition. You're going to be able to leave us a message using Skype. Uh, and then we'll play some of the best messages back uh, when we get into the mailbag segment on the podcast. So that's coming up. We're going to get a HJC voicemail bag. <laughs> the voicemail bag. That doesn't sound good. I don't know why. That's not sitting right. Why? Right. It sounds fine to me. Is there something I'm missing? Maybe it's maybe. It's, I don't know. It sounds, sec- it sounds sexual. I don't know why, but it sounds sexual. <laughs> Maybe just because the podcast becomes what it becomes every week, but it's it sounds sexual. I'm the Ryan. The voicemail bag. Okay, we'll we'll work on that. That doesn't seem like the name we're gonna go say with. It's slower. It sounds better. There's a little little, little gap in between each word. It's all right. But, but one shot is is kind of tough. I mean, just think about it. Like whenever you're getting a call on your phone and you don't answer, you get a voicemail. The voicemail bag. Voicemail bag. Just- the bag just the bag just throws it off, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. The <laughs> bag the bag is unsettled. It's, it's putting images in my head that I don't want to be associated with voices or males. <laughs> the, the bag did not need to be there, but 
Beepo just slapped it right on there, and now we got to live with it. (laughs) And there it is. (laughs) All right, so that's coming up. That's coming to the Jersey Nerds podcast, our voicemail bag. Nope, still not helping. Still not helping. Uh, That's all we have for you. (laughs) Thank you, Beepo. That's all we have for you this week. Be sure to subscribe to and rate the Jersey Nerds podcast. And when you do, you'll get notifications when all our new shows are posted. I'd like to thank Sean, Beepo, and Justin for joining me this week. And thank you to all the Jersey Nerds for listening. Goodbye, everybody.